a very fun topic to discuss because everyone likes to laugh at influencers. We all like to laugh at influencers. Yes. Ex Home and Away star calls out influencers who film themselves crying. First thing I want to ask you guys is, are we past an age now where anyone buys when this stuff happens? Um, nah, there's still some... On TikTok, Jobbers. they totally buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see like crying TikToks all the time. Like, here's the moment I found out that I got rejected from Harvard, and it has like some sad song. It's the song that Ia cries to. <laughs> what's, the, what's, what's the song? A thousand years. By, who sang that? Christina Perry. Christina He's Perry. Just, like, I just, I just pulled over on the side of the road and just bawled my eyes out. So you did it. It was just. I, I didn't nothing. mean. To, by the way, I didn't mean to like laugh. at at Ian no, like you're that. laughing at how honest just, he is. But you did. I'm laughing because I'm shocked at how like open that he is. He's a everything. sweet angel, and you just laugh at him on air. <laughs> uh, sketch therapy he is right. It. Kevin Smith, like nobody buys it when Kevin Smith laughs or uh, cries on camera anymore. I don't buy it. It's, no one's buying it. What was that least, movie he cried? What at was least that movie? When Kevin Smith. Uh, he said he like posted a selfie of him crying after Wakanda forever. <laughs> but like, at least when Kevin Smith does it, he's like, he's like, here's me crying in the moment that I'm crying. Yeah. Not like, here's this totally candid photo or video yeah. of me that I was crying across the room and someone just happened to be recording it. So this actress's oh. name is Tam is Tamin Sursok. Uh, and she's slamming influencers who cry themselves, uh, cry on camera purely for clout. Look. To me, it's one of those things where it, it's when it's like a, when an influencer has a video of them staring out a window and they're like, every day I just sit and look outside the window and take in the fresh air. And it makes me think of the possibility. I'm like, you had to take a phone, yeah. put it on a tripod, set it on your freaking counter and then walk out of frame and then walk back in frame. It's fake. It's not yeah. real. Oh my gosh. There's this girl who's like, she... <laughs> Her snake died or something. She was like a snake keeper. And she set up a video of her holding the snake's dead body and like like rocking back and forth and crying like with the dead body of a snake. I have died like, with like a sad day song over with like Christina you, Perry playing it. Everyone is commenting like, I you know, I was going to say RIP your snake, but also years. like, why are you recording yourself? It's even, crying about it's, it. It's, it's weird. The real way to do it is if somebody else is recording recording you and it shows you crying so hard you can't even get the record button right on your own phone as you're trying to hit yeah. it. You're like, <laughs> also, they, they got like a they got like a, a mic attached to their thing so they can get the cry. Studio really, really, lighting. Really, like studio is like, well, there's like a, you can see the ring lights in her eyes as she bawls her eyes out. It's just so fake. Guys, yeah. I, I think we, I figure it out. I think okay. this this show vibes when I'm cracked out on coffee. It's definitely a factor. I mean, it's not not a factor. Is it good for my health? No. Are we having the time of our lives? Yeah. Look, yeah. and it's also like you can everyone can understand crying at the loss of a pet. That makes sense. Totally. But, reco but, but recording your, it, propping up your yeah. phone like that, and then holding the animal like I just the dead animal. Like. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> it's so phony. So here's what she said. Uh, when you're going through such severe pain, if I got told that something happened to my husband or someone I loved died, the last Thank thing you. I would be thinking of is a camera. I think that's exactly. the call out. What would you do in that situation <clears throat> if someone told you someone passed away? Are you getting the camera out? Yeah, whip it out. And that's the bullshit meter, right? <laughs> and she actually said this happened to her. She was like called out because... She had posted this video of her reacting yeah. to having a miscarriage. But she didn't post it right away. But first of all, I I was at first I was like, well, that's hypocritical. But her husband was actually recording the moment because they were expecting to get good news about her pregnancy. Yeah. They were recording her crying on accident. But she so never posted it. Wasn't it wasn't premeditated. And she didn't post it until after they had their next and, child. Yeah, yeah. So she like wanted to say, like, look, you can go through a lot of harsh things. And even the even then. I'm not sure I like the idea of posting the video. I don't know. I think I that know. people need to be more uh, open about... You hear that? I hear it. Okay. <laughs> I hope everything's okay downstairs. Yeah. Uh, I think people need to be more open about miscarriages because it's a problem that a lot of people go through that's not talked about that much. Yeah. But at the same time, like, uh, I don't know. Does the video of your reaction to it help people? Maybe. 
It's it's totally subjective. Yeah, well, yeah like I'm up in the air on this stuff because like I, I'm judging it based on the influencers, right? Like yeah, it's very hard to separate. They like poisoned the well. It's very hard to separate where those with good intentions and those who are actually trying to help meet those who are just trying to gain some type of clout via. Remember, there was the the whole thing about um, that was we. I think we did a topic about this before about crying influencers, or it might have been about the crying filter. Oh, the crying filter. Uh, yeah, it might have been about the crying filter. It was. Like, <laughs> God, I'm just terrified waiting for this crisis party. It's it's every you time. Love it. It, <clears throat> every time we exceed that that amount, I'm just <laughs> waiting anxiously for my eardrum. Oh, we got a super chat here. Did we? Ryan. No. Oh no. Okay. No, not no. new. Okay. No, not new. Um, the, yeah, like to me, I just, uh, I also prefer people be honest, right? Like I prefer that there's like more sincerity and more, like I, I talked to someone over the weekend about how people often conflate corny and real. And I think a lot of people think of stuff as corny when it's really just somebody being honest or something being done you know, without fear of being judged. Well, we're, it, I mean, I'm not saying this is like a disparaging thing, but it is the same thing if it's on the I internet. Disagree. I don't, I, I don't agree. I think, um, I think that there is a place. Functionally, it's the same thing because we're at a point in internet culture where like everything is so ironic and post ironic and post post ironic and self referential. Well, then I am corny. Cause that I, I, then I'm probably considered corny. I'm corny 80%, and I'm then proud. I'm probably the one who's considered corny 80% of the time because I would rather people focus and talk more about things that actually get them excited, things that actually enervate them, right? Like, I don't know if I buy. Well, people are just so excited about like the cringiest shit these days. That, that's, like, but that's subjective. Like what we consider Funko cringy is Pops. not the, but what we consider cringy is not the same thing with somebody else or what Eric corny. Eric Butts crying at literally every Star Wars trailer. And Disney, and I just me and you are still. I like am on... not letting you <laughs> enjoy things. It's just like pineapple on pizza, dude. I everyone says let people enjoy things. Ah. No, there, I'm a... done letting people enjoy. She's things. like no pineapple on pizza, no Eric Butts in Star thing Wars, that you enjoy no Marvel. Sucks. I am going to call it out. I agree with you so hard because so there, there's a fighting game tournament that's every year. It's called Evo Evolution Fighting Game Series, Can and there's hey Dane. Thank you. I will wait. <laughs> the well, it's the best part. I love that. I was going to make your voice deep and scary. The I love. It was going to be like, I love that. That's okay. terrifying. I, I decided not to do that. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> okay, your point. Dane. Yes. So, and, so this guy, he, he's been uh, like an intimately. <laughs> yes, what the? He's been intimately involved with this tournament since its inception. And every year, for like 10 years in a row, he cries at the end of the stream. He's like, I'm just so proud of all of us and what we're doing. It's like, dude, the first time, it was cute. The second time, it's like, wow, you're kind of emotional. The third time, you need, a, you need Jesus, you need a therapist. Like, what's, like, you are breaking down. Like, you're like 40. He's like 40, and he cries every wow. year. For the for the fact he that he's the organizing, he's one of the commentators. Okay, he's not the organizer. I mean, maybe he helps organize. I don't know. Let's if ask him. If it's a lot of work, you know, I mean, I every year, bro, it, it, would you cry every episode? Like, oh, yes, yeah, I do. You know, what, man, guy, literally, you guys know when this show go, when this show goes off air, we have to replace the keyboard every day because I just bawl my eyes out on the keyboard, and we have to replace it. <laughs> do movies make you guys cry? Some. Or like oh. TV shows or whatever. I don't remember the last time a movie made me cry. Okay. Um, there was there. The funny thing is, there was some scenes in Buffy that were <laughs> wow, that made you cry. no, no, no. That, <laughs> you didn't let me finish. That were clearly designed to make oh. you do that. That I'm just like, even me, who's probably the mo the corniest out of everyone here, was just like, not. Nah, not hitting. Nice try. Brett's watching Buffy in the background. I have died every day waiting <laughs> for you, darling. Like, don't like, be like somebody comes in. To, somebody comes in and like is like ignore the tissue box next to the chair. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a coincidence. Ian's said. weeping. He's like, I don't. Oh. Uh, I don't remember. I I I could have cried at the end of 
Top Gun Maverick if it had been a different day. Actually, Top Gun Maverick, that got me a little bit. What? I, I was didn't like, cry, but I, I could like have. a straight white guy got when? a girl and drove off into the sunset. Holy shit. <laughs> Base. <laughs> it was like in the scene where everyone was, everyone was like hugging and like reuniting and yeah. stuff. Girl, that was when I was like, You know what okay. the best part was? The best part was, you know, so there's a Chad and he like kills that guy in the end. And he like... He, he basically just says like, oh yeah, my kill, the people I've killed went from three to four. And everyone's like, high five, dude, you're a genocidal murder. And then everyone just starts high fiving him. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think like- Does no one remember that part? No. Uh, damn. Well, there, there's definitely- That point um, missed. There, there's definitely some stuff that I've cried at. And I'd have to like, maybe I'll make that'll be my next list. Like movies or shows that have made me cry. But it's never even the part that uh, that you think it's going to be for me. It's always something- I cried at yeah. a part in Sweet Tooth actually over the weekend. I can't, I literally- his dad dies. I literally can't imagine media making you cry. It, no, it's, <laughs> I seriously, because after his dad dies, he like lives on this little homestead and he can't figure out how to, how to like survive or make any of it work. Mm. And then he like, he like burns his toy dog in a, in a big fire. And I was like, wait, no, don't. <laughs> there, there was almost a scene in season two of Lucifer that almost got me, but I was also like. Are you two just crying all day? What uh, the hell's going on? Like, I'm uh, a girl. I'm allowed. Um. <laughs> Fair. Okay. I was uh, I was not emotionally stable at the time. <laughs> so, That's yeah. Uh, so you know, it is what it is. As long as you acknowledge that, and, I was, and, and we can move on from I, that. I was not know. emotionally stable at the time. That's, That's I'm fine. never emotionally. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's why this podcast works so well, Mary. It's like <laughs> Brett's Brett's kind of emotionally stable, but not really. And Mary says she's never emotionally Mary's stable. Just angry about everything. It's, it's like Brett. Brett loves everything, and Mary hates everything, and it's a perfect contrast True. to one another. And I'm object the truth. Uh, no, no, okay, well, no. Objective. Uh, wait. Yeah. I mean, yeah. today it's a good day for. Dan. I'm I'm a thousand for a thousand today. It's a dang day. Except that uh, apparently that last point I made. That no one remembers. I didn't remember. So re you remember they're gonna die, and then the the Chad comes in and he kills the unknown ship, of, and then they land on the cruise and they're like, "Oh my god, we survived!" And the guy's like, "Yeah, well, I went from killing three people to four. And everyone's like, "Yeah, high five. I, no. Chad, Alan Garcia remember? says men can only cry I'm at funerals crazy. or the Grand Canyon. What? What? People say, Grand why do you cry Canyon? for the Grand Canyon? It's it. literally just a big I've hole. Heard that I've heard yeah, that Grow up. Grow <laughs> up. <laughs> I don't know what's so great about the Grand Canyon anyway. I'm trying to think the last time I cried Sorry. for media. I, I'm, um, yeah, like, uh, I don't know how good it is to, like, just sit here and talk about, like, let's talk about all the times we've cried while watching media. That's <laughs> Sorry. It's not exactly good the for The one your last ego. thing I'll say about this is, like, people used to believe everything they saw on social media. Now you don't. And now they don't. I don't believe any of it. Well, I'm cynical some to people, all of it. children do, but you know, still. When I saw myself in Ariel, like, I was like, oh my God, I'm there gonna was be a, a mermaid one there day. There was a time when Logan Paul would post a video on YouTube pretending to be colorblind and all of his fans would believe it. And <laughs> Logan Paul. He'd pretend to cry while looking at the sunset for the first time with like, you know, colorblind glasses, yeah. right? Like, Do you remember that and video? And people believe that. But then iDubbbz made a video calling him out for it. Yeah. And then it was just like, it was over from that point on. Do you remember that video he made was like, I recognize my white privilege and that I am not helpful enough to minorities In and women. In 2020 maybe? Something when like was that, that? Yeah. I don't know, he was having a bad time. I, I will say that when I got sober, um, you're, you can't regulate your emotions the same way. Uh, like, because you've been like physically numb for so long, like everything you feel once you get sober is kind of crazy because you haven't felt anything, not really, mm. in years and years and years. So yeah. like, music is a better example of stuff that's uh, easier to make people want to cry, I think. I think music- Christina Perry. There you go. <laughs> oh, but like, <laughs> like, a lot of things that always kind of, that I always liked kind of <laughs> meant more. Once I got sober because I could actually feel what was supposed to be felt from the creation of the art because I wasn't just numb from the drugs. <laughs> so it's like uh, that that I wasn't I, I wasn't exactly working with a full deck. At oh, the time my God. I remember the last time I cried in a, in a show. Okay. Um, it's not Breaking Bad. It's the other one. Better Call Saul. Oh, oh. my God. They have there's this scene. So recently. Yeah. Yeah, dude. 
there's this no, I was in 2020. There's this scene where Saul is with his brother and they're singing karaoke and the the song they're singing singing is the winner takes it all and it's setting up basically the battle between them and yeah that ultimately like only one of them will emerge but well, they're having a beautiful like brother to brother moment which is rare for them and i don't know it just seemed so cruel that i was like damn this is how it could have been. Yeah. And those shows do good at that too. Cause th th those shows lean into more masculine themes. Yeah. So the guy feels more comfortable crying at something like that. They're like, I get it. I, I have a brother. And, and I remember, uh, my girl at the time being like, those are manly tears. And I was like, <laughs> it's eye sweat, not tears. Yeah. Based. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of pop culture crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. So you never miss the show. Bye guys.